So my name is Darren Evans. I'm a math teacher here at uh, Lakebrook High School. And my job is to introduce you to your SMART panel. And as we think about SMART, there are four different categories of uh, at least ways that uh, SMART is used as a SMART panel. That's what this thing is right here, SMART panel. Then there's SMART ink. That's what I'm doing right there, is SMART ink here. Uh, then there's the Smart Learning Suite Online, which can be used. It is kind of bound up into this uh, whiteboard, but it can be used totally separate from uh, the whiteboard. And so I will show that uh, to you a little bit here in the future or during this time. <clears throat> and then also the Smart Notebook. And the Smart Notebook is really is the... Um, the program that you install on your computer to be able to uh, create activities that you launch on the SLSO. SLSO. It's not really, it doesn't come off my tongue very smoothly. But um, <clears throat> so the notebook is like a PowerPoint uh, program that you use to create these activities and then you launch it online with the SLSO. So we will talk about those things here in the future. Let me do give you a disclaimer that even though I got this fancy thing up there, I just got that from the web, that's all. <laughs> um, my goal here is to save you time. That's my goal is to serve you, to save you time, uh, and to equip you to be a better educator by summarizing my current, which continues to change my current understanding uh, these technologies. I am in no way an official trainer on this sort of thing. Uh, I'm not quoting directly from their their stuff. So give me feedback. If you see things here that, uh, which I'm sure you will, that are uh, not quite right or could be better, then uh, please give me feedback on that. Okay. So let's talk about this panel. The smart panel um, can work in two different uh, modes. Uh, one as a standalone uh, whiteboard, okay? As a standalone whiteboard in which you can write and display. Uh, there's built-in widgets that I, I can show you in just a minute. Or it can operate as a computer, uh, computer monitor. So that's what I'm doing right now <clears throat> is I'm actually viewing a website and all this is is just a big monitor that I am then uh, doing some annotations on top of. <clears throat> So let's look at panel uh, basics, panel basics. Uh, plug the thing in, <laughs> let me show this to you. So it does need to be plugged in. And so when you think about uh, where to put it, make sure that it's near a uh, extension, a uh, power outlet. And um, so position the thing, <laughs> uh, yes, yeah. Let's go to the back. So when you first get your, your panel, open the thing up in the back. Once you get your keys, put it up in the back. Be really careful with this. This is heavy. <clears throat> and uh, can easily, it's not attached to here. It just sits on top of it. So as you take it off, uh, be careful not to drop it on your toe. And oh, should be um, inside here, down inside of here, you should be able to, or you will, uh, find your uh, keyboard, which is, actually, where is my keyboard? Here it is. <clears throat> so you will find your uh, wireless keyboard, which will be tucked back in here. And you'll also find uh, your two uh, markers that will be back in here. What else do you need to know about this back here? <clears throat> uh, this is the uh, Ethernet cable. If you're close enough to the Ethernet connection that you use with your uh, desktop computer uh, for the in your classroom, then you can just plug this uh, into the back here and also into the wall. Um, that way you can don't have to use Wi-Fi, but I've not. But I'll let you decide. Uh, but I've not found that necessary. Uh, the Wi-Fi is uh, sufficient uh, for this. Okay. Just so you know, there is also here is the dongle. That's uh, for the wireless uh, keyboard that's already attached in here, so you don't have to worry about that at all. 
Okay, so you put the cover back on once you're done with that. So you really just need to take this, or well, let me make sure you see that you see. Um, so here is the computer that is connected uh, to the board. So we'll talk about that in just a minute. Uh, but just a plain old computer, it's actually quite fast, but that is part of the system here. So once you put that back on and uh, lock it, you can leave the key just in the back there, that's fine. And you will not need to open the thing up again. So once you pull out those items of your marker and also your uh, keyboard, then you should be all set. All right, so uh, once you get the thing positioned, there are locks down on these wheels. You can lock them so that as you push on this, it doesn't slide back for you. And let me do explain about the keyboard. I don't have that here, but I just thought of that. So when you get the keyboard, this is a wireless uh, keyboard. Uh, if you want to, you can open up the back. Let me get a little bit closer to this. Maybe you can see that. So you can open this uh, here. You should have batteries uh, in there already. And so you do have a power button though. So make sure it's on the green and not the red. So once it's on the green, then you can leave it alone. And you do not, do not have to turn it off and on each time. You can just leave it on. And it should be working once you turn it on. And you should have no, no problems with that. You probably know already that this is a uh, trackpad. And so there's my cursor. This is the left click and the right click so forth. Okay. What is this button for? Oh, yeah. This is for a left click. So I think this button is the same thing as, as this here. Uh, but I'm not sure. Which one you guys can tell me about. Once you get a position where you like it, like I said, anchor the, um, the, the rollers. And on the side here, once you do have it plugged in, you'll see that uh, this is to raise it up or lower it down. Kind of a cool operation there. So you put it to the level that you want. All right, so um, let's go, let's back out of this. And let's pretend that you are uh, just coming into it for the first time. Uh, to turn the power on for the panel, that is this button right over here. So the power button on the bottom right. Turn that on, and it will not look like this, but uh, you will also then want to turn on the power for the computer. So this is the uh, same operation as like on your, your desktop, uh, the button up on top turns it on. And then when you're, just like you do with your desktop computer, uh, you can lock the screen of this one and or put it to sleep if you want to but it's not necessary to turn off the power uh, for the, the computer you can leave that power out or just go to sleep so let's talk about using this now as a remember there's two different modes a standalone uh, whiteboard or as a computer uh, monitor so again right, what i'm doing right now is as a computer monitor so let's back out and uh, use this as a standalone uh, whiteboard. So just so you know, uh, right now I'm in full screen. So this is Google Chrome. To get out of full screen, um, I have wrestled with this a long time and finally figured out and then remembered because I, I will keep on uh, realizing how to do it, but then I forget how to do it. Uh, to get out of full screen, do a long press. So do a long press on the, the screen, and that's just like doing a, what would that be, a, a left click? No, no, a right click on your mouse. It's like doing a right click on your mouse. And so you can get out of uh, full screen uh, here. So then what I want to do now is on the bottom right here, there's a the second button to the right, or second button from the left. Second button from the left. I can push on that one, and that allows me to back out of the computer. So there's my computer. 
But I can back out of that now and go up here. Right? Yeah, there it is. Okay. So when you turn your screen on, it should look like this. It most likely will look like this, except for you know these these are uh, whiteboard um, uh, saved whiteboard images that I've used in the past. Okay, but when you come into it, it'll open like this. So even if I had the computer turned off, this is the standalone mode of the whiteboard. This is the whiteboard operating on its own. Even if I had the computer turned off, it would still uh, give me this. And so what are the things that I can do here on just at using this as a standalone whiteboard? Well, let me show you. So here it is using as a whiteboard. So here is a whiteboard. Notice I can change the canvas of the, the whiteboard to the different um, backgrounds. And then also notice, watch this. Okay, so. Here I have a, a big uh, one, and where is my, there it is over here. So I can control uh, what uh, is being inputted into, inputted, uh, input into the uh, board by touching here, and then let's do red, and let's make this bigger, all right? So now, there it is. Okay, so what I wanted to show you is that I can scroll to the left or up, or down. Do you see this like a thumbnail of the whole big picture? So I have a huge whiteboard. So notice I can go down here and then oops, right, put two there and then I can scroll down this is one and then down here is three. So there are three huge panels up and down and there's also three huge panels I guess we should say A right? and then over here B and then over here C. So you have lots of room to be able to work on this if you want to. Okay, so let's talk about the inking into the whiteboard. Actually, no, let's pause on that. Let's pause on that. Let me do show you that um, here I'm on my first um, image, I guess you'd say, or canvas might be a good way to say it. Here's my first canvas. I can add another uh, canvas to it. Notice I just have one here right now. Uh, but if I want to, I can add, do the plus sign, and now this is a second canvas that they're offering to me. I can do a blank uh, page or shout it out, which is a activity with the smart learning suite online. Or I can do <clears throat> graphic organizers. This is like templates that are available for me. Or I can do manipulatives, things that I can work on and have some functionality. Uh, with inside of it. So, like for example, math, I can use this where this would, no, this is just a times table. That's all it is. But these guys down here, I can grab these and uh, pull them up and slide them if I wanted to. So, two uh, minus three, and then you can do it equals, right? And then uh, negative one. All right, so that's, uh, that's a template that's available. So, again, what I did was I opened up a new one, opened up a new one, and then that allows me to, or it asks me, what do I want to use as the background template for this new canvas that uh, I, I want to, to create, right? So those are available to you, and also those graphic organizers. So again, down over here, when I touch on that number, you can see the different canvases that I have that are available. Okay. Once I'm in a canvas, so let's go back to the original canvas that I was doing, <clears throat> I can add uh, widgets. This is the, the button for widgets. I guess that's the term. Yeah, there it is, add widgets. So I can add a clock and so forth. So let's say the timer. I can add the timer. When I touch that, there it is. It appears over there. And I think I can move this around. Maybe not. Oh, there it is. So once I touch it, and then I've selected it, and I can uh, move this around, and then touch it again, or touch outside of it. Then I can change the time, and let's say go, and it'll do a countdown. Okay, and I have no idea what it sounds like. No sound? Nope, it's not. And then I do have, there is a volume button, so you know, on the bottom right over here, are to turn the volume higher, 
the cue that we see on the left hand side there and turn the volume lower. But actually mine is not working. It does not come out these uh, speakers here. It's coming out through the computer. So I'm not sure why and how to, to change that. So Mr. Gampier and those guys probably know better. All right, so again, <clears throat> here, that's, that was widgets, that was it. Those are widgets, okay. This would be to add a uh, online content so I can uh, type in something that I'm looking for, a tree, and then import that into the, uh, the whiteboard. So uh, even though it's a standalone whiteboard, it still does have connection through the internet and you can bring in uh, pictures and put it down here. What is this? I think this is a screenshot. Oh no, this is to select it. There's, so this button here, sorry, I'm off of the screen. This button here, that's probably an easier way to do it, is uh, to select. So if I want to select a bunch of things, I push that button and then uh, click as it were, or hold and drag. So I can drag down across here and let go. And so notice that I selected all of these items. And here's the uh, button that allows me to decide what to do with these. And I can move these around if I want to, or I can uh, delete them. How about this guy? Yep, I can do that also. Settings? What was happening? I don't know if I'll let you guys play with that one. Let me know. Okay, so any questions? No? Good. Because <laughs> that's about the extent of my knowledge with this stuff. Uh, there, there is uh, how you want to change the pin. So you can make it a, a highlighter uh, here. can make it a highlighter so that it doesn't, it just uh, covers over or overlaps uh, things as opposed to actually covering up. Change that pin. Okay, that's there. It is okay. Oh. Yep. And then let's go here for the highlighter. And then do the green. Yeah. So you see how the highlight goes up on top of that. There are layers. That's interesting. Notice how I have a highlighter, and then I did the pink, the pin on top of that. And then I did. I see what happened. And then I did the um, the highlighter on top of. And I can actually grab these things and move these around. All right, so if that's helpful to you, that's available. Um, to get out of this mode, up in the top left. To get out of this mode, go up in the top left. And notice what it did. It automatically saved my canvas uh, here. And remember that, that's not probably not the best word to say canvas. I would say like group of slides or group of canvases. Because remember that I had actually two different pages, large pages, that were in this one uh, file. I guess if I wanted to, I could, am I able to change the name of that? I don't know. But um, at least here's a historical uh, listing. There is a way to take, go from here now, and then to upload it into the SLSO, the Sweet Smart Learning, whatever it is, Sweet Online, um, if you log in. So up in the top left here, you see this icon, and I have not done it but you can log in. Each of us as a teacher has a Smart Learning Suite um, uh, account online. So I think that if you sign in, that you can then upload those whiteboards, um, images, files that you created here, and then use them on the computer if you wanted to. Okay, so that is using this as a standalone uh, whiteboard. There's probably other functionalities, but I'm not familiar with that. Now, let's go and use this now as a monitor. Let's use this as a, as a monitor. So to do that, I can either uh, touch this input. Hey, let me show this to you before I forget. Because when you come in, it probably is not going to be like this, but it's going to be, it may be just the, like a login screen. To get into being able to enter your, uh, your, what is it, our um, uh, number, our employee number, and also our password. What you need to do is take this from the bottom, pull up, and then you'll be able to see the, the login information. So if, if when it first comes up, actually no, this is in whiteboard mode, so never mind. That doesn't apply to whiteboard mode. Um, so it will come up like this in whiteboard mode. But when you do input, so when I touch here or, Or if you were to 
hit the physical button on the bottom uh, right here. It's the second one in from the left. If I touch that button, that gives me this. Right? So now I'm going beyond or behind the whiteboard and I'm um, looking for inputs into the whiteboard. So now this whiteboard is just a, a monitor, a big monitor for our computer. And there are other um, inputs that we could do. Uh, this is the HDMI down here that we could go into. But uh, this is the one for the computer. And when you first come in to this, uh, it will just have like the normal login screen. Right? And so to get out of, so for example, like I could do this here. I don't want to do this though. But you know, if I, if I put this to sleep, then it would have the normal uh, uh, login screen to, like I was saying, to be able to get to the point where you can uh, uh, type in your employee number and your password, just lift the screen up and that's where you'll see that uh, login. Okay, so let's make sure that cover all these. So we did change input, right? Remember how we did that? Change input by touching that button or else this one down on the bottom there. And let me just, while I'm, while I'm here, um, so again, all this is now is a computer and a monitor. So what you're seeing here and what you're interacting with here is the exact same uh, as if you were on your desktop computer meaning that it acts the same way. But it is a totally different computer. That's, uh, like I showed you before, that's behind the, the panel here. And so the things that you do on your desktop, you will need to do those same kinds of things here. And whatever you can do on the desktop with your monitor, you can also do, do here. So let me kind of just show you some of that. Uh, right now, when you first come in, of course, It'll look like this, right? When you first come in. And so you'll uh, open up uh, Google Chrome or do whatever you, you need to do. Um, let me do show you while we're here, just real quickly. This, uh, this is helpful, I think. So these are Google, Google functionalities for any computer that hopefully are helpful to you. Um, I would encourage you to sign in to your uh, Chrome browser. So I opened up Chrome. And so here is Chrome just like it, as if it was on your computer. And I strongly encourage you, I'm in incognito mode here, but let me uh, go back to this one. So this one, I am logged into my account. So up on the top right, you'll uh, touch here and log in to your uh, district account. When you do that and you hit sync, see right now it's, it is being synced then any changes that I make to these uh, bookmarks, then uh, on this computer, it will also be automatically synced to my other computers that I've logged in, as long as I'm logged into my dis district account. So that makes it really helpful for your bookmarks to be able to carry those bookmarks with you uh, wherever you go. As long as you log into Google Chrome, with your uh, district account. Okay. Notice that I can, we can, uh, log into other accounts also. So even your personal Google account on my desktop computer, I have my personal account, so it makes it easy for me to go over and check my uh, personal email and to do other things like that. Uh, so those are available. So like in this case, uh, here I have a whole nother uh, account um, that's open that I can uh, be able to quickly get access uh, two. Okay. Let's go back to that. Where is it here? This is it. This is my account. That's it. I wanted to do the one with the incognito. Yep, this incognito. The reason I'm doing that is because when I do one that's uh, signed in, it's, it wants me to edit it, this uh, website. I don't want to do that. Okay, let me also mention, so that's what I just explained here, sign into your Google browser. Let me also mention the, uh, about Google Drive's file stream. So this really has nothing to do with the board, except that it makes the board a whole lot easier to be able to use. 
So I hope you know about this uh, Google Drive file stream. Let me try to explain it to you really quickly. Uh, the way you, um, what it is, first of all, it allows you to be able to, uh, because this is a computer, you have files on the computer and Google File Drive, Google, whatever it's called, Google Drive File Stream allows you to be able to open like a Word document or a PowerPoint document and then save it and edit it and then save it on this computer. And as long as it's in your Google Drive file stream um, directory or folder, so in this case, see, folder, sir? Yes, good. So see here, this uh, Google Drive file stream, as long as it's in here, then it will be automatically synced up to the web. So here's your My Drive and Share Drive, just like we're accustomed to on Google Drive in the cloud. So it'll be automatically uh, synced up to the cloud. And then if you have another computer, so for example, um, like right now I have this uh, Google Drive file stream on this um, whiteboard. I also have it on my desktop, I also uh, in, the, in the classroom, but I also have it on my uh, desktop at home. So any change that I make with a PowerPoint, for example, here, then it's saved, it's synced up to the Google Drive on the, the cloud, and then it's automatically synced down to any other computer that I have. So that allows, or allows me to avoid trying to remember which is my most updated um, version of a, a PowerPoint, uh, for example. Okay, so let me show you how to do this real quick. Uh, Portable Manager, open that guy up. And in here is where you're able to download that. Did I just go by it? Here it is. Uh, download this uh, uh, thing. Uh, I'm going to make a, a separate uh, video on that, so let me not, not spend too much time with that. But I just wanted to give you a little hint, a little hint about that. Let's go now and think about how to interact with this uh, as a computer monitor, okay, computer monitor. So let's do the basics, let's back up and do the basics of inking. What do I have up? Let's see, smoke, and okay, so here's the basics with regard to smart ink, smart ink. Um, you can use the pen to, to write, you can use your hand to erase, you can use one finger to move up and down, and then in some programs, not this one, but you can, oh, never mind. <laughs> so you can do it, that's cool. All right, so what I've just done is, it's like an iPad, I just zoomed in to this portion of the Google Chrome. That's cool. I could do that. That's nice. Okay, cool. All right, so you can do two fingers to zoom. I'm learning. All right, so uh, we just talked about this stuff. And you know what? I, I did forget to mention that in the standalone whiteboard mode, you can use this uh, screen capture. I think you can. Actually, I did not see it available there. So maybe you can't. So maybe this is wrong. Maybe I need to, to remove this. Um, and also the uh, screen shade. But I'll, I'll show that to you in just a minute. In fact, let me go ahead and do that. Right, so let me shrink this. This is kind of weird. Okay, so no. All right, so now let's talk about uh, using the pin, okay? And also the, the finger mode. All right, so uh, you should find when you are um, using this as a computer, uh, there's probably functionalities to get rid of this, and if you don't have it, I don't know how to get get it. Uh, just kind of showed it for me. But this this uh, is where I'm able to decide how I want this pin to work on the screen. Okay, so I have options here of different thicknesses, different colors, and also to use it as a highlighter. Okay, so the pin um, here is being used as a highlighter. Let's see, so let's switch it over you know, to what I had it before. But notice, not only can I use it as a pin, 
I can also use it. Uh, there's a toolbox here. Let me see if I can. Yeah, these are just favorites on how I want to use it. And then there's a toolbox. So the toolbox uh, has various things. This is called a spotlight. And I can open uh, whoop, whoops, and adjust this in some ways that I'm not really that familiar with. Okay, that's available for you. Close it there. So again, that was coming up here. And going to toolbox. Notice how it kind of rotates around. Like that. Okay, so let's go to toolbox, and then there's also this uh, screen deal where I can adjust this and look at things with inside this uh, screen. Uh, there's also a shade, so if I wanted to show a certain portion of whatever it is that's behind here, I can adjust this. Okay, so kind of funky things. I'll let you kind of play around with that. All right, so that's the the pin tool. That's saying, how do you want the pin? And these are really things that come on top regardless. And here with the pin, this is what, uh, how you want the pin to operate uh, with the, the board. Okay. And then here, this that little guy is for your finger. How do you want the finger to operate? And this is very important. Uh, notice that if I come over here and I select it as a pin, so now my finger is operating as a pin, as a green pin, and my marker is operating as a blue pin. I still have the hand to be able to erase it, but it makes it more difficult. Like, uh oh, what's going on? How do I, uh, how do I deal with the um, the image that's behind the front of the screen? I have to go back here and uh, touch on the arrow, and that allows me now. Now my finger is an arrow. Um, like a mouse that I can click and drag. Okay. Once I have a bunch of stuff on here, I can come over and look for this little teeny uh, uh, a pin uh, icon and then touch on clear ink. So notice it all goes away. There's also another option. Once you uh, write on here, it shows up again. There's also another option to capture the ink. In other words, there's a screenshot and then you can decide where you want to put that uh, screenshot. Okay, I think that does look pretty good. We'll do I do want to show you. So remember, I'm in full screen mode here. Let me hold on here and let go. See how this comes down? And I can exit out of my full screen. I do want to show you that um, these inking, this spark inking, is attached to the this particular tab for Google Chrome. I can put another, I'm in incognito mode here, but I can put another one uh, here, which is actually two, right? And then this would be three. So notice that whatever inking that I'm doing is attached to these, these different tabs. Okay. And remember, just like you can do on your uh, computer, you can grab this tab and then drag it down and then bring it over to the side. And let's do it this way. Bring it over to the side and let go. And then uh, select which uh, window I want to be on the right-hand side. Let's uh, grab this one here. Okay, so I can split screen. All right, just like a computer on your monitor, I can do whatever I need to here. But notice again, let's, let's go back to this one and like this. So notice again, though, that the inking stays attached to that particular um, uh, tab within Chrome. So the inking stays attached to that particular tab in Chrome. And whenever I do have inking, I will always have this little uh, button up here. I can touch that and do clear ink. Or I can use by hand, like this, and take off. And notice how it just takes off part of that. I can also move this around uh, by selecting it and moving it around. Okay? So with that little button there, it allows me to clear everything that's on there. And these two guys will always be floating around. Always be floating around. Let me do show you a PowerPoint. So let's go back to here, and this is my drive. So again, this is, and that's interesting. So even this inking is attached to this uh, file explorer. Okay. So uh, let's go to my drive. And this is the exact same stuff that I have up on the cloud that I have now available to me on this computer. So now I can go to my stuff for geometry. 
in chapter five that we've been doing. And here is a um, PowerPoint I'm working on. Should be opening. Yep. I probably just opened like three, <laughs> three copies of that because I was impatient and I didn't think it was working. So let's see. No, it's just one. Okay, yeah, it's kind of messed up. All right, so that's fine. But um, let's do this. Let's open up and go to a particular uh, slide. So this is just as if it was on your desktop, except you're operating it with your fingers and so forth. But I can, I can open this thing up and have it uh, play. And I have music that is attached to this. And like I mentioned, it's only playing though through the uh, computer, not through the monitor. And by the way, so by the way, if you wanted to have this music um, communicated through your Google Chrome or Google uh, Meet, right? Through Google Meeting, and then so do incognito. Let's do sound. It's a bit fast stuff. Yeah, maybe it's the same. There it is. Nice. Okay. So I can do a Google Meeting uh, through here. And so um, initiate my Google meeting. Let's go and do that real quick because yeah, it's helpful. Maybe you don't know about this. So Evans Geo is the Google Meet code that I use for all of my classes. Makes it easy for the kids to know how to join. So let's join. It's using this um, uh, video cam up here, webcam. You may not have a webcam that's attached to yours. It's okay. But um, now, if I wanted to uh, play the audio um, of a particular, say, say I was using a, a YouTube video, then go present now, and a tab is the best for video and animation. So I guess it would not do your, yeah, the PowerPoint. So I'm not sure how that works. I don't think the PowerPoint music will go through the uh, Google Meet. But if you're doing a tab, where you're showing a video that has um, the audio, then use this one uh, to, to select which particular tab that you want to present to the students so they'll be able to hear the uh, sound. In other words, the sound will go straight to them through the computer as opposed to it being played out into the room and then heard through the microphone. Okay, there's a difference there. What else did I want to show you? Yeah, let, let's move this. Let me show you the uh, the PowerPoint. Because, so here I am presenting the PowerPoint, okay? And it's important to know that PowerPoint, the program PowerPoint, will receive input from the, the marker. So if I do some marks on this, this is not uh, marking on the screen. This is marking into or yeah, in the PowerPoint. Um, and so this is what kind of gives me a hint of that. I think that's true. Is it true? I think that is true. No, maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe it's not. So I think this was just on the screen, okay, using, and I don't see those little, remember those little icons we had before? So I'm suspicious. I think that this was, this was, this is this. Braces though. Let's do one. Okay. So then look over here. If I touch on this, then I'm able to do some different uh, markers. And so I'm pretty sure that this one is actually on the PowerPoint itself. So let, let's uh, let's experiment with that. So where was that one that I just used? Attention students, we only have one announcement. You do yeah. not Come to school tomorrow. Please do not show up to school tomorrow. Here it is. No school for students tomorrow. Just to notice that I... Stay home. Have a great night. Have a great weekend. Be safe. We'll see you back here Monday at 7 o'clock. Bye-bye. Right. Thank you, Edmar. So notice that I did, yeah, on both of them. So both of them, uh, PowerPoint accepted input from the pin, and it went into the actual file. Whereas, like, Cami, Cami will also do that. If you open up a Cami a PDF uh, browser, or if you open up PDF through the, the Cami um, editing tool, 
then uh, the CAMI, what I mean by CAMI is K-A-M-I, I'm not sure if you're familiar with that, but that will receive inputs from the pin also and change uh, your documents. So be careful. Make sure that you know whether or not you are marking on the screen or into the file. Right? On the screen or into the file. I think are the key things here. Okay, so what else do we want to talk about? Um, here. Those. Um, this operates very much like an iPad. If I wanted to select this word here, I hold down on that, and then I can move around. So again, this is a web browser that I'm looking at here. And I think, so we got Smart Ink. Oh, that's right, I did want to show you all this other stuff. So this is the SLO, S-L-S-O. Uh, let me just show you real quickly what that's talking about. And here it is. All right, so this is now a functionality that uh, Smart has provided for us that enables us to release activities, uh, manipulatives as it were, um, um, on the computer to our students. And there's a whole bunch of different things that we can do uh, with that. Personally, I've played around with it, but I, I don't use it. I just use PowerPoint and Google Forms. Google Forms is the main way that I um, get information back from my students. But, um, so let me just avoid this because this really is not necessary for you to to do in order to know how to use the, the board. Um, but there are a number of different functionalities that are available and um, you can look for other training on that. Let's just do that. That's, that's it for us. Okay. So again, this uh, is the online version of that. And I have a little bit of a description here that you can read on your own uh, for that. And then the smart notebook is the, uh, the program on the computer that has more functionality, allows you to do more uh, with that. Let me do this though. If I may um, show you how I operate in, and get information back to the students, right? As a teacher, we want to, yes, present things clearly, but we don't want to do like I'm doing right here where I'm just talking we want inputs from the students. We want to be monitoring our students. So how do you do that as a teacher? How do you monitor your students? Uh, what I do personally um, is, this might be helpful to you, is uh, I have trained my students to here. So I've created a Google form. So this is from the student's perspective. Uh, this is the, their live class involvement. So I've created this Google form so that they're able to very easily select their name uh, here, and then they can either select an answer, uh, yes or no, A, B, C, or D, or you know, negative 20 through positive 20, or they can write in here, and they can write in quite a bit. So here are a number of lines, is what I meant to say. It's not working exactly right, okay, and then, they hit submit. So all they have to do is, if they want to, just select their name and then uh, an answer or type in a little teeny thing and then hit send. Okay, so what does that look like from my side? Well, um, just so you know. Uh, oh, um, no, I am logged in. That's fine. I'm logged in. In your name, I did that. So did that. It should go. What was it again? It did. Okay, good. So once they submit the Google form, notice that they can very easily submit another response. So now they're ready to go and give me another response. So as a teacher, when I ask a question to them, it's right now, yes. So as I ask a question to them, I can then um, see their feedback immediately. So that Google form feeds directly into a, uh, a Google Sheet. And so I have it all come into one Google Sheet with different tabs on that one Google Sheet. So I touch here on two, and now I can scroll down. And normally I hide all of these things, so 
or not on the way. There's, and so there's the response that I have from uh, Benji, and uh, I can see that. So that allows me to be able to, to say a question. So for example, going back to my PowerPoint or whatever, or just verbally ask a question to the student. And then I can look and I can have each student give me their individual response without the other students seeing it. Without the other students seeing it. And that allows me to be able to, to give them feedback. And I can say, Ryan, you did a good job. Uh, Juan, you got it wrong. Felix, you got it uh, uh, wrong also. Um, and that way, we don't have a smart person saying the answer and everyone else just copying it. It puts them on the hook. And what I tell them is that if you're not giving me responses, then I'm going to hunt after you and draw you in to the conversation. And if you don't respond to my uh, calling for you, then I'm going to take off uh, 20 participation points uh, from you. Okay, so that's just again. If you want some more, I, I can give you a copy of this stuff. Uh, just give me an email. All right. And as far as contacting me, on the bottom of the, the web page here is my uh, email address. It seems scurry to me. I went very quickly through all this stuff, but hopefully that was helpful uh, to you.